What's up, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, Vostok Europe. Maria, hey, I just bought this and I wanted to show it to you. I actually bought a couple of Vostoks. One uh, more vintage Vostok amphibian and uh, this one, which is kind of from their the new Vostok, Vostok Europe, and want to show it to you. So this is, it comes in this kind of hard-sided pelican case. The clips on here are super hard to open. In fact, I only have one of them down because I just popped it open uh, with a tool because I couldn't get the one side open. So it is, they are really, really secure. This case, I, I bet, is pretty rugged, which I think is kind of the overall theme of Vostok anyway. So if we take a quick look here, we have like the Vostok logo in the foam up on the top. I don't know if there's anything behind here. Look at that, there's an O-ring on the case. So this is definitely like waterproof or portends to be waterproof. Uh, I don't know if anything comes off here. Um, just looks like eggshell foam up there. And then down here we have kind of all of the, all of the uh, juicy bits. So I don't even know what we all have. Looks like there's a band in here. Oh, that's cool. So we do have a leather band, and I bet they've included it because look at the holes on this band. Let's see if we can open this up. Uh, it looks like, to me, that this watch uses uh, screw bars. Look at that. Uh, it's curved here. It looks like there's a little plastic detent right there to, to uh, position it. Looks like it's curved right up against the case. The, the leather is molded around like a plastic housing and then a very big space through there. So I'm assuming that this uses the screw down bars. This is my very first of all stock. So, uh, but a really nice looking band, a leather with uh, white side stitching, kind of a, uh, like a, a, the leather grain to it is very, very nice. So you have that, that's included. And then the, the flip side of it, uh, kind of a nice Maria, sandblasted a pretty heavy buckle right up here so and i think that's kind of the vostok thing and that's what's made them famous is kind of the overbuilt look of them so i i think and uh my buddy on youtube wolfie you know who you are for kind of recommending this and the reason i picked this up and the amphibian is basically because when i did that live chat everyone was asking have i ever reviewed vostoks and i never have i haven't even heard of them and so that's uh just something to Keep in mind that, you know, I'm not very worldly. Looks like you get a manual here, and then it looks like you get a tool of some sort. Look at that. So, looks like a hexagonal shape on the end there. Screw bar looks like it's aluminum. Knurled, anodized orange. Vostok Europe, so that's kind of nice. They include, include all that. Um, I like when companies do it's helpful so you don't have to worry about what tools you already have and then here's the watch let's go ahead and take a little peek at it open it up I got this one and I ordered this one because I liked the color combo and it's an automatic you know I mean I do like automatics I know I kind of poo poo people for being like automatic only snobs and I'm not saying that I only have automatics but um, you know when I have a choice I like automatics over quartz generally but doesn't necessarily mean I don't have quartz or collect some quartzes. Uh, but this one is an auto, and I will give you some stats. So first of all, this is a large watch, 50 millimeters in diameter, so it's big. Uh, it feels big. It's heavy. It's weighty. As you can see here, uh, you know, it has like this kind of matte finish all the way around. It looks like a screw down back. I'm assuming that you could use any of these. Let's just zoom in there a little bit. Any of these... Uh, indentations here to unscrew the back so in some ways this is kind of a departure from the early Vostoks which were kind of you know and I, when I show you my Vostok amphibian keep an eye out for that video I'll kind of go into the history of the original Vostoks as I understand it but I think the kind of the Vostok Europe was a, a a little bit of a next generation using modern machining tools to be kind of a little bit more worldly more commercial more for the retail space and so this looks like it's just a screw down back to me uh, on the original Vostok there was not only a, a Preston back but then a screw down ring on them obviously an exhibition back window here as you can see the Vostok Europe on the rotor there 24 jewels it looks like and I think they this is using the Seiko NH35A movement I believe 
So you can see it there, and I don't know if I can find a place where it actually says Seiko on it. Uh, not particularly, but NH35, so A right there. So what, what kind of screams to me that it's that Seiko NH, NH35A is the fact that it's pressed in right there, NH35A, which should be a, a, an incredibly nice movement. The Maria here, uh, AN225, is a huge Anatov airplane, right? I mean, it's it's like the 747's big brother. You know, we have the mother of all bombs, the Moab, and Russia was like, oh, whatever. We're going to do the father of all bombs, the Foab. And the Anatov Maria was that plane. It's like a six-engine plane. It's just huge and, and massive. Uh, this one does appear to be a limited edition, kind of. It does appear to be. 262 of 3,000, so... Um, kind of rare. Uh, it has like a silicone rubber butt uh, uh, strap on it. And as you can see, as we looked at those leather ones earlier, <clears throat> again, it has a little bit of this hockey stick uh, right there. And I think that's to accommodate, which does look like the screw bar through there. Um, but what's also interesting is there's a little bit of anodized orange around it too. So uh, kind of a nice little detail. You know, it's one of those subtle things that your eye registers but doesn't really fall on a spec sheet and it's kind of cool i mean i like screw through bars the the thing about them is i've never had real problems with spring bars yes i have pulled on watch bands before or through use and had some of them bend but i've never had one give out on me and so I, i've just always kind of thought these are a little overkill but you know that's kind of the the vostok thing is overkill right you have like this bead blasted finish along the case here uh, and then the Vostok Europe white band down here too. It's pretty wide. I would say this is like a 24 millimeter wide band. Let's just throw it on the wrist here since we're on the band portion um, and kind of take a quick peek at it. You know, the sandblasted type of finish carries over to the buckle and you can see the Vostok logo right there. Uh, I do like this band. So the nice thing about it is you can see how you know, that hockey stick a drop, you know, very far, very steeply and aggressively off the sides here allows it to fit my wrist. I do have a pretty big wrist, but even still, I'm getting a little daylight. I haven't really cinched this down, but you'll have a little daylight. And what's really nice about uh, the way that they shape these bands is that, you know, you're not going to have a lot of extra play in it. Now, I normally I wear things around a seven and seven and a half inch. Um, I showed you my Spinnaker Overboard. That's also a big watch. This one reminds me a lot of it, and uh, particularly in the bands because both of them have that dramatic drop. But it's kind of necessary to be able to fit a wrist, and especially if you have a smaller wrist, you know, under seven inches, you know, kind of keep in mind that you may have some fitment issues with it. But this is certainly wearable to me. If I were to tighten it up one more notch, it's not even loose. I mean, it wouldn't be a problem to wear this around without it. You know, sometimes these, these watches, when they're too loose and they're big like this, kind of drift and become, you know, under the wrist watches. Uh, but this one certainly wouldn't have that problem. You've got two little retention straps there. And you also have a, the little detents here so that when you put a strap in here, it's going to stay in there as opposed to kind of work its way up there. You also have some fluting and some nice uh, design on the band itself. Now, I when I bought this, they also had a, almost I, what I think is the exact same watch with a black band. I just thought, uh, you know, I'm getting the white dial. Why not go all white? I, I don't have a lot of really white, bright watches, and I, you know, I should have more of them. So we do have, you know, uh, this, like, the bead-blasted look or, or around it. It actually reminds me a lot of, like, the Noble watches, the Director. I showed you that. You know, they all have a very similar finish. Um, this thing is weighty. Uh, it is heavy, it is massive, and it's dense. And I think it's all the components, you know, the, the big back, the big case, obviously the big case, uh, a very big bezel, you know, kind of a, an angled coin edge, like a kind of a razor-like edge to it. Obviously flat, but it's, it's big and it's slightly aggressive. Um, I think it's unidirectional, and that would make sense because if I try to turn it this way, which it won't do, you get the flat parts there, you know, those serrations to really get a good grip on it. Again, on the original Vostex, I think they were bi-directional, and, and there are some reasons for that, but uh, this is unidirectional, solid clicks, very loud. Um, once, they, once I get 
up to one, it, it won't go back, which is nice. You do have a pip on the top, which I'm assuming probably has some loom on it. And I'm assuming the hour markers have loom as well. As you can see, the white dial here is not exactly a bright white like the band. It's just a little bit more of a matte, oh, just a smidge like an off-white. And it's not like a not like a bright white. And I like that. I actually think it's it's a little like chalkier looking, and that's good to me because you know, sometimes when they're bright white, they look like plastic especially if there's no texturing on there. You can see there, the dial is textured. We have kind of this, uh, like, looks like to me, like looking down on a stadium. It looks like seating rows, stadium seating rows, but it's uh, probably more of an homage to, I don't know, like a radar screen or something like that, or a sonar screen. So you do have that. It's kind of nice. It draws the eye in. I love when dials have design as opposed to being flat. Uh, you have this outer ring here, which is a very, very steep bezel. Um, look at how thick that crystal is and how domed it is. You can, you can get, you absolutely get a little distortion of fish, fish eye. But if we kind of hold it steady here, you can look, uh, the minute marks on the outside and the, the individual minute marks, um, on a very, very angled, uh, inner chapter ring there. So the dial itself is definitely drooped down, um, towards the middle of the, uh, you know, towards the middle level of the case. So it's very, very deep in there. And that's presumably to house a very, very large crystal, right? I mean, if it's a true, true dive watch, you wanna be able to have it, uh, have a crystal and have everything overbuilt. Now, I don't know that this one is, uh, you know, something that you're really gonna dive with, and I don't know what its dive credentials are because the hands are in front of it, but uh, we'll get to that. You also have those minute markings replicated kind of on that dial itself down here, automatic right there, date window at the six o'clock, which is nice. I like that the date window color is the same as the dial color kind of just makes the it, it a little less abrupt, you know, especially when you know, more subtle, I think. Uh, Maria and the model number down here on the bottom. And then applied markers here, which are kind of cool shaped. They're like little, uh, you know, almost like airplane hangers. They definitely have a lot of three dimension to them with a polished edge. And then, like I said, white on the top, hopefully loomed up. We'll, we'll find that out. This orange hand here, which I really like, and I like that this kind of, you've got the, the orange for the, t the initial 20 minutes, you know, 20 minutes of airtime with individual minute markings. I think that black, the white, and the orange work together, especially when the orange isn't so dominant, right? Uh, you have um, kind of like a, uh, <laughs> almost like monument, like uh, this looks like the Washington Monument on the hand to me, right? Kind of these, um, oh, why can't I think of the name of what they're what they're called now? But, um, you know, they're both like that. And, and again, white, but presumably loom and then a polished, you know, or a painted black finish. It looks really nice, Vostok Europe. Now, what's interesting here is the crown is up here at the two o'clock position, roughly. Again, some pretty big knurling, uh, reflective of the, the same type of, Kind of, kind of fin-like gear cuts, um, and that's probably to give you more t uh, an aggressive print to torque it down when you're screwing it down. So I'm assuming that it's a screw-down crown, which it appears to be. I'm gonna unscrew it, pops out there, and I'm just gonna pull it out now. Is I, I just wanted to play with the crown because I now I know Vostok's. At least the vintage ones are kind of notorious for having a loose crown. I would not say that this is overly loose but it is it, it kind of feels a little disconcerting you know um but it's really the way the the old vostoks did it because the, there were really two pieces the post and the cap now i don't know if that this is that or i'm just being a little oversensitive because all crowns have kind of a little play in them but as you can see on the second position i can change the time so we can get out of the way of the logo there uh, if i push it in one position here I can feel it winding. If I turn it the other way, I don't know if that's the date adjustment. If I turn it this, pull it out here one more time. Okay, so there's really kind of the popped out position, then there's this first position where I go counterclockwise, change the date, and it looks like, yeah, there's a third position really to change the time there. 200 meter water resistance, so 600 feet. Uh, that's pretty. That's pretty serious, you know, dive capability. I would never get there. I don't go in the deep end of the pool. 
Um, so you do have that, no Vostok logo or anything on there. As you can see here, there's a little bit of subtlety in the case, the way kind of the lugs are machined from the case is that kind of makes them look like they are attached, right? You get a little bit of a lip there before you get to the flat edge of the case or same on this side, uh, but looks great, man. I mean, uh, I just think, you know, like I said, for having recently discovered this watch brand myself, um, and for the whole having it in, in my hand for the first time, I really, really like it. One thing I did notice that's a little funky is that the, 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 the tip on the silicone band or the rubber band here is like slightly angled. That's kind of funny. That's kind of cool. Full stuck Europe. Now there's, there's, there's kind of two philosophies about Vostok and Vostok Europe, and, and I'm going to tell you that they're going to be different. One, basically, getting my Vostok amphibian uh, is, is, was kind of tough. I had to buy it from a Russian guy, and it's not old. I think it's kind of new, and I'm hoping to show it to you and learn about it myself. But one of the things that I think is supposedly really interesting about the Vostoks is that they're cheap, and overbuilt and kind of run like a tank and they're still great watches and they they keep good time and they're kind of a novelty and just a smoking good deal okay the Vostok Europe's are almost eh, not the opposite but you know my Vostok amphibian I think I paid like $70 for $80 for um, this one is like a $600 watch and I think it's that's like off of an $800 retail now you do get a, a an automatic movement with it that's the tried and true Seiko movement. Uh, and you get what looks like to be a very high quality piece, really overbuilt um, and a really beautiful and with all kind of the modern trappings of a, of a great watch. But it's not like a smoking good deal. And I'm not saying it's a bad deal. It's just not like they're giving these away. You know, when I was reading about the original Vostoks I went to buy, I guess the, the thought was go out and buy any of them. They're just cheap and they're way underpriced these i think are very fairly priced and uh you know i bought this one i paid for it myself um, because i wanted to see what the vostok hubbub was about and i really like it i think it's a good value you know 500 bucks or 600 bucks or 589 plus tax and shipping i think was what i paid for it um you know i'm saying yeah this is a good watch this is this is a a solid watch and a good deal and i like it right now You've got to decide there are other decent dive watches like Tissot and things like that. But um, I really like it. And I think having a, something a little different in, in my collection and a name that even some watch guys I don't think are, are that familiar with is, is pretty interesting to me. The other thing I will say is it's just a beautiful, beautiful watch. I really, I really love the look. I love the orange, black, and white. Um, I love how big and chunky and oversized and bold it is. Uh, some of you will absolutely hate that, but kind of is what it is. So there it is. Check it out. 18 millimeter thick, 50 millimeter wide dive watch from Vostok Europe, uh, the Maria automatic 200 meter diving watch. I just think it's, I just think it is the cat's meow. Peter Von Panda out.